Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm going to be revisiting my anticipated releases from the fourth quarter, so October, November, and December of 2022. Just taking a look at what did I actually pick up? What did I read? What did I DNF? What did I think of them? Are there any books that I still want to get to? So we'll go through each of the books in the order that I originally talked about them and then talk about some stats at the end. So first is A Rover's Story by Jasmine Warga, which is a middle grade sci-fi about a Mars rover. And it kind of takes the perspective of the Mars rover as it goes and kind of first as it's in the lab and getting set up and meeting people, including a, a young girl who's there. Uh, and then as it gets sent to Mars and is doing its mission. Um, this was a really sweet story. There's a lot in this about um, exploration and this love of science and knowledge. There's um, quite a bit in this as well about friendship and about identity and about kind of who are you. Um, there's also quite a bit in this about family relationships. So I thought it did those really excellently. It was very engaging. I think that the kind of the AI part wasn't 100% like realistic. Um, and the ending wasn't quite as strong as I wanted it to be. But even so, I thought it was a really, really good middle grade. And I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Next was a picture book, Where We Come From, by John Coy, Shannon Gibney, Sun Young Shin, Diane Wilson, and illustrated by Dion MBD. So this was a really lovely picture book with, which had all of these different authors coming together. And it's examining where we come from, and that starts with the creation of the universe, but also looks at all of these authors come from different backgrounds. They have different experiences and sort of examining humanity and all of the different ways um, that we have differences in terms of where we came from as well as similarities and shared experiences and so I thought that that had such lovely messaging as well as beautiful artwork and I gave it five out of five stars. Next is Nikhil Out Loud by Malik Panchali, which is a contemporary middle grade about a queer young boy who is a voice actor for a very popular series, um, but his family ends up moving to a small town in Ohio to take care of his grandfather, and that's a bit of a challenge for him. I have not picked this one up yet, and I am so sad that I haven't because it, I just know that I'm gonna love this book so much, so I really do wanna get to this one still. Next is Season of Love by Helena Greer. The premise of this is adorable. It's about um, a Jewish artist who ends up inheriting a Christmas tree farm from her great aunt um, and has to kind of figure out what to do with it. And so it's a, it's a queer romance. It's got holiday spirit. It's got some interesting things there about grief. But I did pick this up and I did DNF it because even though the premise sounds like really rom com -y, it's not. It's a very heavy book. And so when I started reading it, um, it was just way too heavy for me. It was way too intense, too much drama, too much kind of conflict. And I had picked it up wanting kind of like a sweet holiday rom-com and that was not what this was. Um, maybe if I'd picked it up at a different time, it would have been better for me. But as it was, it was a DNF. Next was Into the Riverlands by Nevo, which is the third book in the Singing Hill cycle. I love this series. And in this book, um, the cleric Chi is going on a journey and ends up kind of being with some other people and as they're on the road they're telling stories especially about kind of heroes um, in this land and so what's interesting is that each person has sort of different stories about these heroes and so it's all about perspectives and facets of storytelling and how that kind of uh, reflects the real identity of people but also as they're going there's a lot of bandits in this area so there's a lot of kind of martial arts and fighting and things like that this one was a little bit more action oriented than some of the other books in the series, which isn't as much for me, but even so, it was still such an enjoyable read and I gave it four out of five stars. Next is The White Mosque by Sophia Samatar, which is sort of a memoir and history of Samatar's experiences um, being the child of a um, American sort of Swiss descended Mennonite and a father from uh, Somalia who you know was converted and part of the religion um, growing up as somebody who's both white and black in America in that Mennonite community and then also this is taking place um, as she goes on this trip to Uzbekistan to explore um, the history of the Mennonites church's expansion into Uzbekistan in the 1800s and so it's this really fascinating mix of 
kind of personal experience, identity, culture, racism, history, religion, uh, all sorts of different topics. And it's woven together with incredibly beautiful writing. I adored this. I gave it five out of five stars and it was one of my favorite books of 2023. Next is The Stand-Up Groomsman by Jackie Lau, which is a contemporary romance that is a sequel to Donut Fall in Love, which I absolutely adored. Um, and this follows uh, sort of friends from the first book. Um, this is an enemies to lovers story about basically friends of the couple from the first book who end up getting thrown together uh, because of all of the wedding preparations for their friends, but they got off to a very rocky start and their personalities are also quite different. The hero is a comedian, a stand-up comedian, and the heroine is somebody who is very emotionally closed off. Um, and so just sort of that opposites attract type of dynamic. I think that there was a lot of really interesting stuff in here about um, kind of both of them dealing with emotional issues, but I didn't really feel the chemistry as much as I wanted to. And I always struggle with enemies to lovers because I don't like the enemies part at all. So it was a good book, just not as good for me as Don't Fall in Love. And I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Then there's The Best of World SF, volume two, edited by Lavi Tadar, which is a collection of sci-fi short stories from people all over the world. Um, I think that Lavi Tadar does such a good job of curating these stories in terms of representing all kinds of voices, people that maybe I've read from before, but tons of people that I haven't, people from all sorts of different places in the world, translated things that were written originally in English. It's really such a cool collection. But you know, because it's an anthology and there's so many different authors, plenty of them don't work for me. Um, I think also Lavi Tadar just has a slightly different taste in sci-fi than I do. So some of these were just a little weird. <laughs> um, but I just thought it was really cool hearing all of these different voices and I quite enjoyed the collection. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Next was Dislocations by Sylvia Malloy, translated from Spanish by Jennifer Croft. This is a very short book that is all reflections on ideas of memory and loss. So I think this is a little bit of auto fiction, but it's about the, the main character's best friend um, is dealing with something like Alzheimer's or dementia. And as she loses memories and loses language that causes the main character to question her own identity. You know, if, if this person who's known her for all of her life no longer remembers these facets, no re longer remembers those experiences, how, how does that, you know, if nobody else knows those things, how do they exist for, for the uh, main character herself? So it causes her to question her own identity and memories and language through the loss of those from her friends. So I thought that had like some really interesting ideas and discussions. I don't know that it necessarily executed everything as, um, as fully as I would like, but I still thought it was a really interesting experiment and I gave it four out of five stars. Next is I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Tteokbokki by Baek Si Hee, translated by Anton Herr. This is a memoir of Si Hee's experiences going through therapy and dealing with sort of ongoing mild depression and unhappiness with life. Um, and it is pulled directly from transcripts that she had recorded from these therapy sessions, but kind of edited and with a little bit of reflection here and there. I think that Si Hee is really vulnerable in this memoir and really kind of exposes a lot of the, the the issues that she's gone through um, but it was a little bit hard for me to get through one because it didn't necessarily come together as much as I would like it to also it did not include hardly any tteokbokki which was a little sad I wanted more food writing I think um, but also you know I just struggled with her as a person um, she's you know quite quite petty in a lot of these and it was just a little hard to empathize with her. Uh, but at the same time, she's being really vulnerable and honest and so I can respect that. So it wasn't, you know, moving for me as a reader, but I really respected what it was doing. So I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Then there was The World Keeps Ending and The World Goes On by Franny Choi. This was a poetry collection that basically centered on this idea of how the world is constantly ending and has ended for so many people. There have been apocalyptic events for so many people, genocides, and yet people still survive. We keep going on. And so it takes this very, very political look at all of this. Um, it's really powerful, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of activism. I think that I found it exhausting just to read these poems. Um, I think there's total activism burnout in it, but it also was doing some really interesting things and I loved the themes of it. 
so I gave it four out of five stars. Next is To the North, Al Norte by Leon Salvatiera, which is a bilingual uh, English and Spanish poetry collection about the author's experiences coming as an undocumented immigrant to the US from Nicaragua as a teenager. Exactly the kind of poetry that I want to read, but I haven't picked this up yet, so it is still on my TBR. Then there was Africa Risen, edited by Cherie Renee Thomas, Olga Chovwe, Donald Ekpeki, and Zelda Knight. This is an SFF short story collection that really focuses on the idea that, you know, Africa has so much to offer, so much history and culture and ideas and future. And so just exploring all of these different African and African diasporic voices. Um, I love the kind of the mission of this collection but the stories themselves were a little bit more hit and miss for me, especially because quite a few of these were really graphic and I don't deal well with graphic things, as well as some of them were just very heavy, which again, isn't so much my thing, but I loved what the collection was doing and I loved getting to try all of these different voices, even if not every story worked for me. So I gave it three out of five stars. Then there was a pros and cons list for Strong Feelings by Will Betka Brunswick, which is a graphic memoir of Betka Brunswick's experiences with their mother um, passing away from cancer. And so it kind of alternates between memories of their mother when they were a kid and then memories of their mother getting sick and passing away. I think that that exploration of kind of the relationship with their mother was really strong. There's also some issues with relationship with their father, especially, you know, they come out as non-binary and there's some issues there. Um, and I think that like a lot of that was was really interestingly done. The art style itself was a little bit more sketchy than I like, and I just don't feel like it kind of came together as much as I'd wanted to, but even so it just was a really interesting exploration of their experiences. So I gave it four out of five stars. And lastly was How to Turn into a Bird by Maria Jose Ferrada, translated from Spanish by Elizabeth Breyer. This is um, a story about uh, a young boy whose uncle ends up becoming a caretaker for a large billboard and decides that he's gonna go and live up on the billboard and uh, kind of be one with the birds. And so it's all about this boy's relationship with his uncle. It's also about society, um, about the way that they sort of fear and distrust anything that's different from them. It's about these characters who don't really fit in and the way that society tries to kind of crush them if they don't mold into this to what's expected. So there's a ton of political and social commentary in this. There's also just such a feeling of surreal and whimsical um, ideas as this, you know, this guy's living up in this billboard, the way that the boy sees the world. I love Maria Jose Parada's writing and this book was just stunning. It's very short, but very meaningful in the topics that it addresses as well as just so engaging in the characters and the writing. So I loved it, I gave it five, out of five stars. It's one of my favorite books of the year. I highly recommend it. Okay, now I want to just go over some stats looking back at these books that I put on my anticipated releases and how well did they work out for me. So looking at the stats, there are two of the books that I have yet to get to. They're still on my TBR. One of them I did DNF. Four of them I gave three or three and a half stars, which is good but not great and then everything else was four to five stars. So really, I had a lot of success with this batch of anticipated releases. I really enjoyed these books. They were excellent. Some of them made my favorite book of the year. I mean, I was really happy. And a lot of them that were in that more three and a half range were because I was trying something different or because they are like a, a collection of stories and so just anthologies make things. So I, you know, there's lots of variation in what you're reading. So. I'm really happy with uh, how the ratings turned out for this collection and I'm actually very happy that I got to everything other than two books so I think that's a pretty good outcome for this quarter. And then looking a little bit more into the authors themselves, four of the books that I read were by debut authors, five of them were by authors who have other works published but it was the first thing that I picked up by them, and then six of the books were by authors that were known to me. If I break that down, looking at the way that that relates to the ratings that I gave, it's kind of interesting. Um, kind of 
it makes sense that the debut authors I gave the lowest score to, but it's weird that I gave the authors who were new to me such higher scores than I gave to the ones that were known to me. Um, but maybe what that means is that the ones that were new to me, they were doing something that was particularly interesting to me. And the authors that are known to me, sometimes I just want to pick them up because I want to see what else they're doing, even if the specific work is maybe not 100% my style. Um, but I'm not sure. This is also just like such a small sample size for just one quarter. I'm going to look at this at the end of the year, kind of wrapping up all of my 2022 anticipated releases as well. And that'll be a lot more books since I'll get a little bit better numbers. Um, so I can see kind of how, how does that play out? Because it was a little different for the last time that I looked at this stat where it was kind of equal across all of them. So yeah, but it's very interesting to take a look at how these break down each quarter. Okay, so those are all of the books that I'd had on that anticipated releases from 2022, the fourth quarter, October, November, and December. Um, I'm really pleased that I got to so many of them and that so many of them turned out to be such good reads. If you guys have read any of these or if you're interested, I'd really love to hear from you about your thoughts. Uh, just leave me a comment down below.